Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss seven problems you might face when wearing trousers and how to fix them. Pants are an essential component of most classic outfits. They are often overlooked or treated as a secondary consideration. And no, for our viewers across the pond, today's video will not focus on boxes or briefs or how to prevent chafing or panty line. Today we're discussing pants, as in trousers, not pants, as in underpants. The garment that covers your middle and legs massively impacts your overall outfit, comprising about half of your overall look. They have a major effect on personal comfort and on the overall impression of your appearance. Any mistake you make with your trousers can critically compromise your overall ensemble. But with the guidance we're offering today, you're never gonna have to worry about those problems because we are primarily focused on classic style. We won't have much to say about contemporary casual garments like joggers or skinny jeans. And while we're not casting our pearls before sweatpants, most of what we're sharing today can be applied to all trouser types. It will be especially true if you wear classic style trousers. We'll dress trousers, chinos, khakis, and such. So enough talk, let's pull up our pants and get started. No, not like that. Number one, trousers that are too long. It's never a good look for your trousers to have people wondering. Did he forget to have those hemmed after he bought them? Overly long trouser legs. Create distracting and unappealing drape and folds. Breaks at the front and back of the hem. The potential for excess fabric to be dragged under the shoe or to be stained from contact with the ground. And an overall loose, puddled, excessive appearance that puts us a little too in mind of clown pants. Okay, we'll start off with the baggy, uh, what? Those are supposed to be baggy pants. Baggy! Ooh. Remember this simple phrase, puddling pants promote poor panache. Overly long trousers are common because many men are tempted to buy clothing that is too large, assuming that this will give them room to grow into it and that it will be a better investment. But you're not likely to drastically change height after reaching adulthood. So ensuring that you have an initial good length in your trousers will make more sense than leaving extra length, unless of course you wanted to revive the platform shoe trend. Fortunately, overly long trousers are one of the better problems that you can have because it is relatively easy to solve. Simply take the trousers to an alterations tailor and have them hemmed. You can choose from a variety of hemline options, including flat, military, or cuffed. Not sure if cuffed trousers are for you? Raphael will help you decide here. Number two, trousers that are too short. Unlike too long trousers, too short trousers are a bigger issue because while you can remove fabric fairly easily, it is a bit harder to put it back. Traditionally, short trousers were associated with ill-fitting clothing, something that was possibly a hand-me-down something that had shrunk in the wash, or when purchased without particular concern about style, like the look of Steve Urkel. In recent decades, however, shorter hems on men's trousers have become popular, intended to cultivate a slim, trim image, evocative of tightly fitted, high fashion clothing, or dandified flair typical of Mediterranean styling. While we love these looks that let us show off our socks, these extremely abbreviated hemlines are just another trend in trousers. So you're better off achieving a similar effect with a more classic cut, like the no-break hem popularly associated with the 1920s and 1960s, which offer a neat, sleek look that is also timeless. The key to pulling off this look? When standing, your trousers should at least reach the top of your shoes. This is an easy way to determine if you've reached a timeless, no-break hemline. You'll find more information on how to determine the perfect trouser break for your look with our guide to the proper trouser break in length. Number three, and proper pleats. Pleats were a definitive component of trousers for a large portion of the golden age of menswear. And after decades of pleats being unfairly ridiculed, we at Gentleman's Gazette are very happy to see that modern menswear is reviving the pleat. Well, most of us are. As I've said before, I'm not a huge fan. Anyway, pleats are gathered folds of fabric and a Z-shaped fold that are pressed and sewn into a garment. They help to control fabric volume, shape the garment, and allow for greater range of movement. Preston helps you determine in this video if you should be wearing pleated pants. But we should note that not all pleats are created equally. One of the most common pleat mistakes is not having enough pleat. Pleats require additional fabric, and many modern trouser makers are notorious for cutting corners. To save money, they don't allot sufficient fabric for a full and well-cut pleat. If a trouser maker only cares about the appearance of pleats and not their functionality, the result is a superficial pleat that is simply too shallow to perform its proper functions. Pleats like these do not benefit range of movement and they can't even serve as guides when pressing a good crease. Shallow pleats are essentially a collection of odd vertical creases below your waist that produce unappealing bagginess and strange puffiness. As Oscar Wilde once said, And now, Kyle's Poetry Corner. Shallow sorrows 
and Shiloh loves Levon. But Shiloh pleats, we hope, are soon gone. Okay, okay, we might have added that last bit. A similar mistake involves pleat fabric. During the golden age of menswear, garments typically employed sturdier and heavier weight fabrics. But nowadays, often to save money, lighter fabrics are used. And lighter weight wools just can't drape or hold pleats as well as heavier weight wool was able to in the past. And when you factor in flimsy synthetic fabrics like polyester or nylon, the results are insubstantial pleats that are prone to ballooning or opening. And your trousers should never resemble a wheezing accordion or other things. Yeah, but they wrinkle weird. What do you mean wrinkle weird? I don't know. They kind of, you know, they tent. Oh, God. Both of these factors illustrate what happens when pleats are treated like an aesthetic detail and not a functional component of the trousers. So if you want your pleats to do their job properly, opt for natural heavier weight fabrics made with sufficient material. This will keep your pleats neat and looking sweet. Number four, unharmonious pairings. Bo Brummel once remarked that if your alpha makes others stop and stare, you're probably doing something wrong. When it comes to trousers, we found two situations which might attract unwanted attention. High contrast pants that stick out like a sore thumb or trousers that too closely resemble another contiguous color in your outfit. So because the garments don't match exactly, something just feels off. The former issue is fairly self-explanatory. Classic style does not rely on bombastic color combinations or jarring contrasts to create visual interest. So loud brash hues or hyper oppositional colors just aren't something that we're gonna see in this style of dress. Unless Cesar Romero's Joker is one of your style icons. <laughs> Hello, kitties! Meet the Joker! Instead, bold colors are employed as a singular detail, subdued and softened by the rest of the outfit. The latter issue, articles that are too tonally similar, is a bit harder to pin down and resolve. It has even tripped up the modern James Bond costume department. In this scene from Spectre, Daniel Craig is wearing a tan brown sport coat with dark stone trousers. But under most lighting, these colors seem almost to match, giving the impression of a suit. It looks noticeably off because the jacket and trousers are not exactly the same color. This look was likely inspired by Sean Connery's ensemble and Goldfinger, in which he pairs light brown twill trousers with a brown tweed hacking jacket, a garment inspired by horseback riding ensembles. Although Bond prefers to be wearing his while riding in an Aston Martin DB5. However, while Connery's look works because of the obvious variation in texture and material help make the colors work together. Kirk's trousers and jacket are not sufficiently contrasted in either color or texture, causing the outfit to appear muddier and awkwardly too similar. This issue tends to be especially true of summer and earth tone ensembles, so be extra attentive when working with these color palettes. During the golden age of menswear, gentlemen of style resolved their low and high contrast issues in their wardrobes by favoring trousers of versatile color and textures. Also, taking their shoes and socks into consideration, we've combined the sum total of their sartorial knowledge and experience, which you can find in a free ebook here. Number five, over-reliance on belts. A belt is a beautiful and elegant menswear accessory, but it's not a miracle tool. A belt can help your trousers sit at your hips, but for the most aesthetically pleasing effect, the variation between your waist and your waist length of your trousers should be minimum, when the trouser waist is considerably too large for you. The belt might be able to cinch around your waist, but the results will be not ideal. The fabric around your waistband will bunch. There will be notable creasing, unsightly ballooning, and your trousers will look ill-fitting. You might also try to solve overly large trousers by belting them higher up on your natural waist. This will give you a bit of a scarecrow look. 1939 might have been in the middle of the golden age of menswear, but we prefer Ray Bulger style out of costume. Belts are also sometimes employed to remedy trousers that are too small in the waist, providing a mechanism for closure when it's uncomfortable to fully zip or button the fly. Suffice it to say, a belt is not a solution here. Larger trousers are. In fact, in the majority of cases, massive size discrepancies should always be resolved with a different size of trouser or with an alterations tailor, not a belt. You'll find all you need to know about how pants should fit here. Sometimes otherwise even well-fitting trousers can look awkward around the waist. This is especially common with jeans because denim is very stiff and has difficulty conforming to the hollow of the human back. Assuming that your belt is properly sized, it's not the belt that's at fault, but the construction of the jeans. This issue is best resolved by getting your jeans fitted at the waist by a tailor. The work is actually less expensive than you might think, and will produce exceptional results if you're someone who rocks jeans, as I am occasionally known to do. Number six, overly worn trousers, or if you prefer, pants past their prime. We all know what it's like to find a favorite pair of pants that we love, only to dread the knowledge that their time on this earth is limited. 
But the fact of the matter is, we put our trousers through a lot. Repetitive stress from walking, friction from sitting, pressure at the seams, plus stains, spills, and sticky little fingers. What you doing here? Merry Christmas to you too, Uncle Job. Everything all right? Just don't want people's kids getting their sticky little fingers all over these $2,600 pants. <laughs> so it's no surprise that trousers tend to wear out faster than shirts or jackets. With casual trousers, these issues are less important and can sometimes add a lived-in charm to the garment. But most day or business trousers, and certainly any formal trousers, aren't good contenders for the distressed look. Trust us, we know how hard it is to let go of a beloved pair of trousers. I own a pair of dragger pants that shrunk in the wash and look ridiculous, but I refuse to get rid of them, while Raphael has a pair of corduroys that are so old and worn that he's literally worn away the cords. So I guess they're just Roy's now? Of course, we only wear these pants in the privacy of our own homes because they're so damaged. Need help determining if you can keep wearing your old trousers or if it's time for them to go to the great wardrobe in the sky? Preston explains the basics of acceptable wear and tear in this video. Number seven, overly full pockets. Our last mistake is less about pants themselves and more about what you put in them. Ladies often like to complain about the ample storage our trousers afford us, but this can be both a blessing and a curse because of our propensity to overload the pockets. Well-cut trousers will allow basic items to be stowed in your pockets without creating excessive bulges or creases. But this isn't Dungeons and & Dragons, and your pockets aren't enchanted Oxford bags of holding. Overstuffed wallets, mobile phones with chunky cases, massive key rings, and sufficient loose change to fund a weekend at the arcade. These will all spoil the beautiful lines of your trousers. This is especially true with skinny jeans, but no pair of pants is improved by oddly shaped lumps protruding from your midsection and backside. The solution? Streamline the contents of your wallet. Then invest in a neatly made wallet that is designed to fit neatly in a pocket. You can also distribute the items in your trouser pockets throughout your outfit. Jacket pockets, especially interior jacket pockets, tend to do a better job disguising bulky items. If needed, consider investing in additional receptacles, ranging from a portfolio to a small case, up to a tote bag or attache case. You'll find that they come at a variety of price points. It is our most modestly priced receptacle. Uh. $180. And of course, you can always just slim down your contents to what you actually need throughout that day. Here are our everyday carries for your consideration. Now that you know our seven tips, you'll be able to avoid some of the common mistakes that mar men's trousers, ensuring that your bottom half looks just as good as your top. So whether you call them pants or trousers, you'll always be looking your best. Did I miss any of our tips in today's outfit? Let's find out. Today I'm wearing a cream and black double-breasted sport coat with a black short sleeve shirt black trousers, and black dress shoes.